All right, welcome to Unlocking Astrology with the king of the, uh, the king, the key. The key, the key. Maker, I don't know if I'm a king. The key keeper, you might be a king. Samuel Reynolds, SF Reynolds on the Twitter and unlockedastrology.com. Hello there. Hi. Hello, Karen. Okay. Um, before we get started, the woman that's over your shoulder, I, I know that that is, is that? Yes, sir. My mother. Okay. Right. Okay. All right. You. Know, all right. We'll, we'll move on. I just, I see her every time we're here and I know. You're drawn into, yeah. I mean, I always like the, the fact that my mom is looking over me, you know, I so. I, I got Ida B. Wells. Uh, Clay Kane gave me that. So. Mm -hmm. Happy, uh, he gave me the pillow. So I mean, I try not to keep too many personal things because people people get caught into you, you know personal lives, things, and you know it's you're here for a thing. That's fine. So let me mind my business. Okay, let's move on. Mm -hmm. uh, so today I was gonna talk to you about compatibility because yeah. people are obsessed with the you know what sign should I, is my soulmate and how do I find my soulmate and what sign is perfect for me and you hit me back because I sent you that and you're like mm, I'm not, I do that but I don't really do that what you call it woo 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 I did call the woo yeah some are into the woo related to soulmate and talking about it a particular way and that's not what I do I do compatibility um for certain but compatibility on the level that people are looking for, like my soulmate, the ideal sign for me, that's not what I do, right? So what, and in what fact- What do you do in that space? There's a couple of ways in which that can happen. So if someone is interested in someone, you know, or at the level where they have developed a relationship, which is preferable, you know, I think you should develop a relationship before you talk about spending $185 or $200 to give to an astrologer for a first date, right? I don't think that's worth it. Um, but after, you know, that you feel something is happening, then you could talk with me as an astrologer about what are some of the issues, challenges, and also some of the ease that you have as a couple, you know, in terms of understanding each other, um, getting a sense on a read on each particular person involved in the relationship. And we can even look at a form of astrology where we can look at how the astrology of you two coming together creates a third party, right? In terms of the relationship, right? Not the child, but so much the relationship, how you act as a unit. So there are a couple of different ways in which we could look at that and assess compatibility. When people come to me and then they say, well, you know, is so-and-so my soulmate? I don't know of any solid and consistent astrological techniques where someone can identify of all the people in the world that this person has been blessed by God, karma, or whatever, as just uniquely your soulmate. Um, and when I've observed that, that kind of discourse from clients, and I know some astrologers do it, I'm not one of them, but I'm just like making, you know, that it's out in the ether. But when, when my experience is when clients really are fixated on someone as their soulmate, one or two things happens. You know, one thing that can happen is that there's strong compatibility and they have found someone who they relate on a deep soul level and then they call that person their soulmate. And that's fine. If it works, if they're happy, if, you know, the client's happy, if the other person involved in the relationship is happy, alhamdulillah, that's wonderful, right? So that's something I haven't seen as much. The other possibility I've seen is where the person is confused and they feel like this person for all whatever indicators that they wanna use related to astrology or, or not, or karma or dreams or whatever, this person is my soulmate and becomes this dialogue between the astrologer and the client where they basically wanna rope the other person in and say like, well, don't you see you're my soulmate because of this X, Y, and Z and we should be together. <laughs> and not recognizing that even if you find your soulmate, that doesn't mean by virtue of them, quote unquote, being your soulmate, they're obliged or obligated to be with you in this, quote unquote, life, if you're into past lives. I know we were going to talk about something else, but I find this fascinating, uh, especially, you know, folks are on online dating. You know, when I was coming up, that wasn't an option. You know, you met people at church, you met them in the grocery store, you got introduced at, you know, to by friends or family members. And that's, you know, how you met the person that you ended up with. 
now it's you know online and these online sites have people who are matched based on personality type you know you do this whole extensive thing i haven't done it but you know from i know at least three people who've gotten married through a you know a mingle or a match or something and i'm like and it, and they said it, it works it's almost like you know how in certain cultures the family sets up the the person they they the marriages are arranged marriages based on mm-hmm. things and, and most marriages throughout time have been arranged absolutely so this fa- falling in love the fairy tale cinderella and all that is fairly new for in human humanity history. Mm-hmm. so so now you add in the astrological thing <laughs> what how different are you then you know when people come to you than a dating site that matches people up based on their proclivities, their likes and dislikes and things like that in terms of your process when you do meet a couple that have been in relationship for a minute and they want to know where this is going. Well, yeah, because when you say now you add in, I mean, in some cultures, it's never gone away. Like if you go to India, right, astrology and the astrologer is instrumental in terms of how people come together. If you don't have the blessing of the family astrologer related to a coupling, it's not going to happen. How does that work? Like, oh, so so wait. So you're telling me in India? Yeah. In addition to family, money, you know, status, yeah. caste, they also consult an astrologer. Absolutely. Many families. I'm not going to say. I mean, not all, obviously. Um, but yeah, that that's taken into consideration, and then that term, you know goes into. You know, there was a show about it on Netflix even recently where the that ma- documents was a matchmaker but I, I didn't yeah. watch it enough to know that was just she was just a matchmaker though she was just a matchmaker but she consulted with an astrologer and he even had an astrologer talk with one of the women involved so it's kind of embedded in the culture um in, in more the west and western history it the astrologer's involvement hasn't been necessarily as big in that same way but you come to the astrologer, you know, in terms of like the parallel to the dating site with, you know, to get some insight. And that's the key thing that is more insight rather than saying like, oh, I'm going to rate your matches completely 90 percent or 100 percent or blah, blah, blah. It becomes a way of understanding. And I do give a figure, actually, when I do talk about the alignment between two people. And I was like, OK, this is. 70% in terms of working on things. And believe it or not, the low numbers, 70, 80, are not bad, right? They sound like if we're talking about just grades, like, oh, that, that, that sounds like that's awful. No, 80% means that there's a lot already there between the two of you, but you have room for growth, which is what you want. A lot of people want to see 90%, 100%. If you're 100% compatible in that way, one of the problems that can happen I'm speaking from an astrological point of view. I'm not talking about the data sets of these different programs. But if you're 100% compatible, I still wonder how much room do you have for girls, right? You may end up feeling like you're attached to your sister or your brother, mm. or you know, you just kind of have bed deaths and you go toward having a roommate because you know you're so simpatico. There's some dynamic tension is, that presses us for growth. Can you we, know, presses can us we, to can think about to that. that? I think people are so wrapped up in wanting answers that they don't live their lives, right? This, this life is to be lived, meaning that everything that's out there for you to explore, examine about yourself and others should be explored, you know, sure. short of death or anything that's going to harm you. But I think everything is to be examined, explored, and enjoyed. And I think we human beings in this particular time mm-hmm. period, mm-hmm. W- you are seeking answers as opposed to living life. So, so you go to an astrologer, you know, we talked about it with the uh, cusp. You, you were talking about the degrees of this and that, you know, I, there are people that read their horoscope every day to know how their day is going to go instead of like, because even a bad day could be the birth of something good, right? It, it's sure. all in how you perceive what's happening in that moment, you know, and I've, I've really worked on this, you know, it was, what, there was a book about, you know, don't sweat small stuff. And, yeah. and, and the notion is you choose to be angry. You choose to be upset. You choose, you know, your reaction to a thing. Like I, I always tell people it rains on everybody, whether you put an umbrella up and keep it pushing or get out in the rain, put your face up to the sky and say, thank you God for watering the plants. Or you're just, Oh, I'm mad. I can't stand the rain. 
the rain is on everyone. How you decide you want to you, you want to embrace or reject it, that's a choice. Is it the same when you're looking at people's charts and you give them like, okay, you have the potential for this, but it's you really have the up to us. You have the potential for this. You have the time frame for this. You have particular windows where you may. So, for instance, let's say that I I see. Um, with a particular client, I mean, this is a conversation I had most recently only with, with a client, where I, I said to them that I don't see your career trajectory staying along its current course, which means then that either it changes by job or um, it changes by, you know, getting fired or it changes by you, you know, kind of tweaking and finding something more along the, the lines of what you want to do. So they had choices, but I'm like, by the end of this year or this particular time frame I gave, it's not going to be the same, right? Now, if this person said to me like, yeah, I'm not listening to this guy. I'm just going to go along my course. I don't need to deal with this. Then I would say as the astrologer, I would feel like it's, there's a statistical likelihood then you're just going to get fired. Right. And then you're going to be like, how come how this happened, Lord? <laughs> because you didn't take the, the bull by the horns to kind of contend with it at the time that you could have. And that's a similar thing that I think astrology gives us in so many different dimensions of understanding what's kind of coming down the pike, both in terms of the good and the ill. Same thing in terms of the rain. We we use meteorology. We use one branch of astrology. It was a branch of astrology, meteorology. What? Um, it was. When? Oh, for most of its existence, up until like, I would say close to the 18th century, right? So anyway, you know, a lot of the, the, a lot of the ideas, like the first meteorology book is also in the first astrology book, which is Tetrabiblos, right? Written by Ptolemy, Claudius Ptolemy, right? Who was more of a documentarian. So he was documenting things that have been said and put in various sources for a long time in Alexandria, Egypt. So anyway, you know, if with a meteorologist, if they say, oh, it's going to rain or it's an 80% chance of rain and you don't take an umbrella, you're going to get wet, right? Whereas if you take an umbrella, you don't have the same kind of issue or whatever. Um, yeah. These are the same things that we think about. Now, in terms of romance, it's kind of recognizing here are some of the hazards that you may be dealing with. And all the hazards are not just on the other person. They could be how you two combine. So for some, you know, if you want someone who's like a little more chill, but you know, you, because you're more chill and blah, blah, blah. Well, I could say like, well, you know, you have a firecracker who likes to talk a lot, right? How do you feel about that? Now you may be ready for a change and feel like I'm up for, it's trying something new, you know, but that may still not work with you, but that's still up to you. Right, right. You know, even as you're talking about that, I was like, ooh, the, the, the possibilities are endless, right? Uh, and, and I think you're, you're absolutely right about people. People always, often say this, people want things for themselves that may not be good for themselves. I just had this That's conversation true. last night with someone. They were like, well, you know, we got to watch the algorithms and give people what they want. And I said, children want candy for, for breakfast. Do you give it, give a child candy? And I'm not saying people are children, All people, but, I, yeah. mm -hmm. but I feel like, you know, that's the other thing missing. There's no, no stop discipline framework. It's give people what they want. I said, that's how we got Trump. The news outlet said, up oh, 24 hours of Trump gives us better numbers, means we can get more money for advertising, more Trump, more Trump, more Trump. And then what we ended up having was indoctrination, right? Because 24 seven, all the networks are pushing this thing out. And well, we that can't go, go ahead, I'm Yeah, sorry. I'm sorry, I didn't interrupt you. Yeah, I mean, that, that speaks to something that you were talking about earlier related to like what we were talking about with astrology and dating. The nature of the ego is to protect itself. It wants to insulate. And so, we do live in a certain age of ego. When I say ego, meaning that we believe that we can use our cash, we can use some, you know, we can monetize our time in some ways to insulate ourselves from damage, from pain, from harm. And by virtue of thinking that we can do it that way, 
right? Rather than having patience and living life, we set ourselves up for a certain kind of trap. So yeah, I can sign up extra to participate in this algorithm, you know, using this particular site and find my match. But and you mentioned India, because I spent some time in India. And one of the things that blew my mind about arranged marriages, because at first, you know, I was a typical Yank and Westerner, like, why would you do that? Blah, blah, blah. Isn't it horrible? Blah. But someone said to me, like, unlike you in the West, right, which, you know, you go more for romantic marriages, and there are romantic marriages in India, just to be clear. Um, when you have an arranged marriage, you go in with the intention of loving someone, not just being in love, mm. but willing to do the work of loving someone. So I think that's also important, important to take into account when you've kind of gone for something arranged through like a data set, right? Whether it's there's some measure of astrology, but even like if it's just like big data using like okay Cupid or whatever, it's still going to be where you still have to have this willingness to love, not just like be in love. Because being in love, me, in my experience and understanding and observation, isn't necessarily sustainable. And, and I think we don't even know what that is a lot of times, you know, because mm -hmm. it's not that feeling in the gut of your stomach and the butterflies and that that feeling you get when that person's hand brushes by yours or, you know, that 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 fluttering in your heart, you know, you don't fall into love. Love develops, and, and I'll often tell people, you know, in my show with I love you, and that's an action word, you know, love is a set of actions that yes. you must take. It doesn't just happen to you because, and, and I think it's really interesting that people come to you and it's like, this is my soulmate, make them, make them understand that, as opposed to like, what, what are you doing? You know, we're watching folk, you know, have expectations and a sense of entitlement to other people's bodies and other people's emotions, right? Because- I, you should be mine. You know, like people feel that that sense of ownership of over somebody else. And or that it done, works. I'm sorry. No, and I'm just going to say, haven't done a bit of work to even make yourself, you know, ingratiate yourself to that, to make that person want to be with you. And I'll say it, particularly men. And I think one of the things, um, and not to say that excuses women, but I think I find that more from my gender than I find from, from sisters. And I think that's where we need to do more work. Because like, for example, you know, I've, and I talk about this when I, I give talks on the different returns of the planets. Venus has a return where it's close to your birthday every eight years, right? Eight years from when you were born. So that's your Venus return. So it happens, you know, it happened at eight, 16, 24, 32, 40, going on, right? 48. Now, one thing that's interesting is I kind of, I pick out the 24th year of life, because there's a lot happening. And that's a Venus return, a Jupiter return. And I've observed brothers, you know, even when I was younger, you know, they would say things like, no, I want a woman who can cook. And I always feel like now I'm older and like, well, Negro, can you cook? Right? Because like, what are you bringing to the table? We men don't often think about what are you bringing to the table? She's the table, right? She's got what every, you know, she's bringing it. You know, you're not, you can't have children without her, you know, all these other things that manifest through women. But men get into this like certain mindset where it's like, you know, you got to bring me stuff. What are you bringing? Right. How are you courting love? Mm -hmm. How are you bringing love? All these things become important. So I think, you know, going back to what I was going to say too, um, people also get locked into a certain mindset where they think the cosmos operates like a machine or like Amazon.com. Right. And that's not just a matter of impatience. They think like if I'm an Aries and she's a Sag, then she automatically should be attracted to me. Right. And it, it doesn't work that way. There's so many different countervailing elements involved in astrology itself that may not make that so. So when people come and say like, well, you know, what's my ideal sign? You don't have just one. Right. You may have we're talking about a formula for you along a spectrum of things, right? I mean, I worked out some elements of what I need and like, you know, for a time I have it in terms of a partner and then it may be someone else in another time frame. but it's, it's kind of recognizing that it's not just one thing. So for instance, I mentioned that, you know, a lot of people talk about, they know the, the elements, fire element, air, earth, water, but there's also cardinal, 
which is like now we're in Aries season. So that's the start of a season. Then there's the fixed Taurus, which holds the season. And then there's Gemini, where it's kind of in between, where it's this a, a releasing and at the same time and holding on. And, you know, you may also need a combination of someone, if you're very fixed, you may need someone who's more mutable in your life, you know, that brings a little different kind of energy, but has a, t a tad bit of fixity that you can relate to. Now, if someone were too mutable, it's like, you are always changing the script, right? I can't even cope. But if they can hold it a little bit, you can keep a certain continuity. So there's all these different elements, or I should say pieces that go into understanding compatibility. Well, and it's not that difficult to learn once you kind of know what to look for, but you know, a lot of people just know it on this, the level of sign and that's where they can get disappointed. What about people changing? You know, like, so yeah. you talked about the, the Venus coming in every eight years. You're not the same at yeah. 32 that you were at 24. You're definitely not the same at 40. You know, that's, that's usually a magical number. 48, 56, different than 32. How does that play a role as you grow and evolve? Hopefully all of us are on that journey, right? You know, as you grow and evolve, because I think sometimes people stop growing. Yes, they do. And then they expect the in the relationship and they wonder why if you're in a relationship with somebody that is ever growing. That's not so, gonna last. Even if you're compatible with 24 or whatever the age is, you know, doesn't mean that if that person keeps growing and you don't or vice versa, that your compatibility will, will that also change? I'm assuming so. Yeah, I mean, it, especially if there's, if there's been some ground level compatibility that's been established, right? Then there is still an increased chance that if both people are committed to growing, that not only have they grown together and there's a patterning that happens, almost a copying, but they're now not just growing individually, but they're growing together as a unit, right? And by growing together as a unit, and feeling that, then they feel like they have space. And that, that can happen for along a, a broad spectrum of things. You know, some couples grow um, where they need more space apart from each other for a time, and then they need to kind of come back together. They have a rhythm, right? And then there's some people who are inseparable. And, but, you know, in terms of what they do and what they tackle, that's how they kind of continue on. So I think the the thing that an astrologer does is figure out what's the base note. What's kind of the thing that we're dealing with. And if you have the base note, there's room for growth. If there's trouble from the beginning and there's not corresponding work related to that, because a lot of people think, oh, you know, when we put, put two charts together, then that becomes like how we have real compatibility. That's not the sole meaning and no nature of compatibility. There's work involved. Then there's also just, you know, in terms of individual tastes and art. What I mean by that, I'm not interested in men, right? So you can put another chart of a man with my chart and be like, oh, these two are compatible. We're going to be friends. It's not going to be romantic partners, right? I just don't, it's not my proclivity. It's not my inclination. So it's not just the magic of charts coming together that kind of spell like these two people kind of forge a certain bond. You have to contextualize it. And so are there signs in, in your experience, Samuel Reynolds, that are like you mentioned Aries and Sagittarius. That was my, my parents. Yeah, they're fire my signs. Sag, my mother was an Aries. They stayed together. It was crazy until he died, right? But they were never going to get a divorce. I knew that, right? Are there signs that are naturally, just, just the signs, compatible? So there are signs that feel they're of the same tribe, right? Okay. And the fire signs feel there, there's a way in which they understand each other is the true for the earth signs, you know, Taurus to Virgo, Capricorn, um, fire signs, just to be clear, you know, Aries, Sagittarius and Leo, um, and then for the water signs, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, and then for the air signs, it's Libra, Aquarius, and Gemini, right? There's a way in which they feel like they have an understanding by virtue of the shared element. Now, then we can go into where you have 
the opposite, where you have something that is distinct from you um, and seems unfamiliar, but there is still some aspect of familiarity. Aries is, and then we can just do the pairs. Aries is opposite to Libra. Taurus is opposite to Scorpio, Gemini to Sagittarius, Cancer to Capricorn, Leo to Aquarius, and Pisces to Virgo or Virgo to Pisces, right? So, you know, with those six pairs, those can be combinations of people who come together, um, but opposite to tract in that sense, mm -hmm. right? Um, then we can go into the level where you feel an affinity. This is what we call in terms of sextiles, you know, and that's every other sign, right? Aries feeling a sense of compatibility with Gemini or with Aquarius, right? Both air signs, right? Um, Gemini feeling a sense of connection to Leo, you know, and that's um, Jacqueline Kennedy, uh, well, Jacqueline Kennedy with, you know, um, John Kennedy, for example. Um, so there's ways in which there can be some way of that. But then you can have out of the blue connections, you know, like between Barack Obama and Michelle Obama, right? Where you have a Leo with a Capricorn. I would think though that was more of an arranged marriage. I said it. Out okay. So, That's not what they document, right? I mean, no, like. No, I, I'm not saying they don't love each other, but I right. think they both put on paper things that they wanted to have happen in their lives. And each of them met, I mean, she talks about it in Becoming Michelle Obama, that they met each other's paperwork to what they wanted to accomplish in their lives. Hmm. Right. Yeah. I mean, and that's, that's a different dimension related to relationship that I think some people, you know, try to avoid and not really get into either. Right. Like you said it earlier, and this is something to think about. I'm not dispatching or dismissing romantic relationship, but it's not the only way to be in a relationship. You know, one of the things that we learn from older cultures is people can be married and, you know, have children together, but they're not always on top of each other. They have their girlfriends, they have their boyfriends. When I say boyfriends, I'm not talking about anything. Friends, like, you, friends. They have their friends, friends. They have friends, their family, they have their village, right? And they have the people that they're connected to. So they're the pressure on, on the unit, you know, and, you know, this is talked about, speaking about it from the African point of view, um, the spirit of intimacy by Sobonfu, Somme, who is the wife, um, who was the wife of Maladoma Patrice Somme. This is something that she talks about. Um, so this, this idea, you know, I wouldn't fault it. I mean, I don't know, you know, what, I know some measure of Obama's story from reading his biographies. I haven't read Michelle Obama's uh, uh, biography, biography just yet, but what I know from reading his, I don't know. Yeah, I didn't get the sense that it was overwhelming. Like, you know, he, he saw stars, you know, whatever. They kind of fit each other's profile. I'm not going to knock that. I think that's important. I think that's important, especially for older folk. You know, if you're kind of over 40, you know, do you need your, your socks knocked off? Do you need to be, you just, you just need to kind of know like you're on a certain trajectory together, working together, and you like the person. Because we're not meant to be alone and turn this house into a home. All right, so uh, Sam, we're going to end it there. And uh, I guess next week, can we talk about uh, elect, was it election? Electional astrology and Monday? more astrology. Yeah, Monday. the forms of astrology, different forms oh. of astrology. All right, so we're going to break. Thank you for indulging, you know, because- No, know, this was great. I have fun. That question a lot. And I hope you guys uh, were fed by that. And if you are, like button, subscribe, follow Sam on Twitter at SSS, as in Sam, F, uh, I forgot what it is, Reynolds. Uh, on the Twitters, and of course, go to Unlock Astrology. I appreciate you. Love you. Appreciate you. Thank you. And I'm glad you're you're completely healed because people will give you wishes too. He's feeling good. So there's that. All right. Thank you, Sam. See you next week. Thank you. See you next.